Good morning. Good morning. It's Marquis Martin Hayes and it's Wellness Wednesday. Thank you for joining me. Today, I look forward to introducing our guest from Finding Justice, LaShawn Miller. She's going to share with us some insights and things you may or may not know, but definitely add value to the world of wellness as it relates to your life. But before we do that, you know, I like to always take a moment for Rodan and Fields because I believe that outer wellness matters just as much as inner wellness. Today, I'm going to be my own product. Take a look at my face and my skin. At 47 years old, this is a result of just three months of being consistent on my redefine regimen. I got a nice cleaning wash. I have a toner that I use. And then depending if it's morning or night, if it's daytime, I have something, a moisturizer that's an AM moisturizer that also has sunscreen in it. And in the night, it has a rejuvenation moisturizer for my face overnight. Rodan and Fields, you're looking at it, baby. All right. So. Let's jump into today's show. LaShawn Miller, she's waiting in the waiting guest room for us here. So hold on, let's bring her in. Good morning, LaShawn, how are you? Great, how are you? I am well, I am well. So glad to finally have you in person. Her and I have talked on the phone quite a bit, but now we get to see each other and connect and I'm so excited to have you on the show. Glad to be here, thank you. Yes, all right, so Finding Justice, a flower bed a flower and vegetable garden. A flower and vegetable garden. All right, so let's just jump right in. Before we get too far, because one of the things that I love that you do is that you're in the community gardening and helping people empower themselves. And you do that through partnership. And so I just wanna tell you, I absolutely applaud that because I know what it's like living in a food desert. And unless there's something or someone like you, the options are slim to none. Absolutely. So tell us a little bit about you, how you got into the world of this, and then let's jump into Finding Justice, a flower garden and a flower and vegetable garden. All right. Well, my name is LaShawn Miller. I am the owner with my business partner, our team of Plunkett, of Finding Justice, a flower and vegetable garden. Uh, both of us, we both live in the West Garfield Park, Austin neighborhood. Mm -hmm. And that is a food desert where their the vegetables and fresh produce is very scarce. Um, yeah. There aren't many grocery stores in our neighborhood. We have to travel very far to get to them. Um, the convenience stores that are very far and in between offer some produce, but it is of very poor quality and it is very mm -hmm. expensive. Um, so that's a problem. Um, I believe, we both believe that a lot of uh, the diseases that affect our communities are diet related. Um, yes. You can find more fast food restaurants and convenience stores in yeah. our neighborhoods than any other that I've seen. Um, I grew up in suburban areas where we, did, okay. they, we didn't have those problems in those neighborhoods, but when I migrated back to Chicago, it's ridiculous. Um, and it's kind of a thing that people don't think about. It is yes. an injustice yes. yeah. that is done purposely. Um, yeah. And I'm just here to make a difference. You know, uh, I have a farm. We grow fresh produce. Well, before you go too far on that, you okay. said something that we have to slow down on because a lot of times what happens is we'll, we'll explain, like you just eloquently explained about the impact of nutrition on behavior and community. And a lot of times people don't understand that. Are, can you break that down a little bit more for us? I got some things I know that I love to share as well around it but I'd love to kind of get your feedback on what that impact is like. Cause sometimes it's just taken for granted. It, it's not, there's no direct correlation per se. Okay. You're absolutely right. So food is important. Um, it fuels our body. Um, it changes. I mean, there is on a molecular level, right? Chemical yeah. even. So yes, it is. Even if you break it down to our school systems here, they don't mm -hmm. teach us how to eat, you know, um, it's just eat to get full and then you'll live another day. And that's not true. So we need to learn how to eat to fuel our bodies, to keep us strong. Yeah. Uh, what we put into our bodies, like you said, can affect our mood, um, can affect everything, everything. So yeah. if you eat for a purpose, um, you'll just have a better quality of life. So yeah. again, in our neighborhood, I mean, this is a well-known fact for some, not most. So when there aren't any stores 
out here that will offer us fresh produce mm -hmm. because it is known part of a healthy lifestyle is eating fresh produce. Yes. When you eliminate that, then you start to replace fresh produce with processed foods and mm -hmm. fast food, which has mm -hmm. almost no nutritional value. And yeah. they also put chemicals in those box yes. pre-prepared foods yes. that counteract yes. you know, our healthy yes. systems and create yeah. problems. Yeah. And these problems that are created mm -hmm. often, I mean, it's, I don't want to say it's done purposely, but it is, it's well, a known fact that this happens. It's happening to us. Yes. And to counter that, we need yeah. to start eating for a purpose, eating more fresh produce yeah. and things of that nature. Yeah. And, and might I add, some people might think it's a choice. It's not a choice when you don't have choices. Like, you know, some, I, I know there are some mindsets that will say, well, if they know better, then they should do better. But if the convenience store that's not even on every corner, that's not in every block, that's not in the mile radius always, doesn't offer those types of things, you literally have to leave your neighborhood, assuming you have reliable transportation to do that, to get something of sustenance for your body and your brain. I love that you talked about it being metabolic or on a molecular level, because the reality is if like, so there's healthy food and then there's junk food. Like there's no real in between. It's either healthy for you or it's junk. And if the option is only junk, then the body and the brain can then only produce from an acidic state. And the funny thing about it too, that I love what you do is continuing in that vein. Like if I am in disarray hormonally, what do you think I'm going to be able to offer? If the food I had can only make me feel full, but doesn't do anything for my sales, what, how do you expect for me to show up? I can't. And that's the experience that then gets judged. Well, these people are that way. It's like, no, 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 no. They're intentionally malnourished, literally malnourished by offering foods that are full of fat, sugar, salt, processed. But, but here's the funny thing. When you said that, and I'm going to be quiet because this is your, your show, not mine. The, the funny thing that you what you said is a lot of times that mindset I just shared, we also don't realize that it's also happening in suburbia. And the proof of it is, is that 70 percent of the population is overweight or obese. So where one group thinks they're doing good, they're in the same bucket, not even realizing it. And then along. Yeah. Yeah. So it's, like you said, it is a choice. Um, however, yeah. we haven't as a people have not actually been taught how to eat. Um, you know, again, it's just eat to get full. I mean, and oh, then a parent available. will bring you hot dogs and French fries for a child to eat as a regular food, you know, uh, yeah. that has little to none yeah. nutritional value. And then that gets passed on from generation to generation. So we don't mm -hmm. know as a people as a whole, what we need to do to be better, to feel better. Um, yeah. When I started farming, um, again, I grow food and I'll just take a carrot out of the ground and just eat it just like that. And then what yeah. I started to notice is that my energy level was mm -hmm. more than I had ever had in the past. Yeah. Yeah. Um, I was starting to feel life, really. Um, yeah. And as I said, food contributes to your mood and how you think that also mm -hmm. changed with raw vegetables yes. straight yeah. out of the ground. And then yeah. it got me to thinking, um, if you think about, I'll tell you what happened. I went to the grocery store and I bought a bag of lemons, okay? Okay. On that bag of lemons, it said, this lemon, these lemons have been sprayed with some chemical that for okay. freshness, to add it for freshness. So I got to thinking like, hmm, these lemons came from California. So how long does it take lemons to get from California to the grocery store or to the warehouse? To the warehouse, To the yeah. grocery store to the shelf that has to take weeks. No wonder they have to spray these things. And then when it's on my counter, it lasts for maybe a week, right? So one thing I did notice as a farmer, if when I take carrots out of the ground, they're not hard as the ones you buy in the grocery store. And if really? you sit them on the counter, they will last for months. If you put them in the refrigerator, they last for like months. So it's, wow. it, again, you have to think about the process. If it comes from, I use California because we get a lot of food shipped here yeah, from California. Yeah, sunshine. Yeah, Sunshine State. It takes a long time to get from California, again, to a warehouse. Mm -hmm. And then there's a lot of hands that touch it, you know, yeah. the transport, you know, the warehouse, 
the grocery store. And then don't forget the food that's already out on the shelves now has to be removed. And now this new produce comes out. And what do they restock their shelves? I don't even know if it's daily. So mm -hmm. it's a process. Getting it straight out of the ground, it will last longer. The nutritional value is there because you actually know where that seed came from. You know that it was not treated with those chemicals for freshness, right. added for freshness. Right. It's just a better thing to do. Yeah. That. I but agree. a lot of people just don't know farmers. I'm a and, farmer. And so, and so check, I want to get your feedback on this before we jump into the farm itself. As a farmer, so as, as a guy in nutrition, I always look at it from the angle of there is, so we, we talked about coming from McDonald's or whatever fast food joint or convenience store to, okay, at least getting to a grocery store. And then you're on the, you're on the more, I was going, I was, I love this. I was going to use, you're on the more extreme end. You're on the more natural end. I grew up, my grandmother had a farm at all of the properties that we own, not a farm, excuse me, gardens at all of the properties that we own. And grandson, we're going over here to Eastland and we're going to pick up some collard greens and you, you know, I mean, that's just what it was. And so it's the, the, what I, I struggle with, how do we get from the convenience, from, from the house to the convenience store, even to get what's there, which obviously to your point, isn't the maximum and what you've brought about, how has what you brought about taken us to where we naturally need to be? Yeah. Wow, your grandmother is doing everything that I want to do. Um, I would like to see that, yeah. uh, a community garden everywhere. Um, mm -hmm. Again, um, I talked about pricing, right? Yeah. Some of the prices in these stores are unfair. Um, you know, yes. thing is scarce, Absolutely. it's more expensive. But if you could just think about it, when you go to a grocery store, everyone eats bell peppers, right? I use this example a lot. Mm -hmm. You're familiar with a bell pepper, you cut it open and you have all those seeds inside of it. If you can imagine, each seed is a whole plant. So if you can imagine what a 25, 30 to 50 seeds in a bell pepper, those are 25 to 30 bell pepper plants that will produce maybe 50 bell peppers on its own. So to think that people are hungry, mm -hmm. it's hard for me. I mean, it's purposely done. So mm -hmm. we can start in our communities growing things and sharing what we grow to keep it diverse, then I think that that would be great. Um, if yeah. we could get enough properties with community gardens, we would never even need a grocery store. We could so, feed ourselves. Yes, okay, so how did you come from suburbia? I know you had a career prior to farming. How and why, what made that switch for you, right? Because I'm sure some people are interested, but how? Did, what happened for you to make the shift to what you're doing? I mean, you're, you've made a commitment to this. I have, and it's a great commitment. Um, farming is not easy work. Um, the average age of a farmer is like 50 or 55, and there are no new farmers, like very scarce. Um, I think, and I don't have the correct numbers at the moment, right. but just know that it is a very small percentage of new farmers. So right. our farmers now are getting older and there aren't any new ones replacing them. Okay. So just think about that. Um, and it's important because without food, we perish, right? Right. So right. that is important to me. Um, when I was young as well, we had land in the South and I noticed that food tastes better down there, hands down. Yeah. Coming back to yeah. Chicago, I, I do not eat some fruit that is here because it just does not taste the same mm -hmm. as grown mm -hmm. on a tree in mm -hmm. the South. And so that got me to thinking like, why doesn't it taste good? You know, I want yeah. food that if it doesn't taste good, it's probably not as nutritious as the food that I've taken off trees or out of the ground in the South. Right. Um, so that sparked my imagination for what I was going to be later in life. So my life before farming, I was a producer of live events. And so a part of live events is catering um okay. with food so you know you talk to chefs and you get an idea of their needs and how they feed people and on such a great level and in that industry if food is not used it's wasted mm -hmm. great waste um so that was another spark 
there are people that are starving, but there are some that can throw hundreds of thousands of dollars of food away. That's not right. Every day. Yep. Yes. Um, so that was another part of it. So then um, I ran across a program for horticulture okay. and I, because I've been interested in growing food, but you know, people just think like, I don't know how to do this, right? Which yeah. it isn't as difficult as you might think. Um, and okay. if you have resources to help you, then it's, it's easy. you'll get the hang of it very quickly. So okay. I did that and um, I started to become more interested and also um, being outside in the field, like with mm-hmm. the sun, that's another part of health and wellness, uh, yes, being outside so D. Yes, in the sun. It also, I've read books and uh, read through studies that have shown that being outside for, uh, there was a study that was done that people were outside for three days and it changes your mind uh, on a molecular level where your senses really? open up with like, uh, smelling, you're hearing, and as those things are changing, uh, your cognitive skills are stronger. Um, I gotta so go back to like, running. I used yeah. to run and I felt like I was smarter then. No, it's true. Um, and it has been explained, you know, there's all type of uh, written yeah. works about it if you get into it, but being outside, is, it actually does make you smarter, to put it simply. Um, okay. So when I was outside on the farms, I would just know, and I mean for hours, okay. I would just notice like my mind is clearer, you know, yes, um, yes, I yes. feel at peace. Um, yes. You know, it was just a great overall experience. You know, yes, I would come home tired, back hurts, feet hurt. But at the end of the day, I just felt like a better person. If you're going to work hard, it should be to feed people. You know, that's just how I felt about it. So that's how I made that drastic change okay. to help others. Okay. And so then how, so now, now that we are on the west side of Chicago, you, you pretty much figured out you want to start a garden. How did this come about? Um, so through that program that I did to learn how to grow things, you know, how to plant it in the ground, how to prune things, how to feed plants and make sure that they're healthy, pest control, things of that nature. Mm-hmm. Uh, the program offered a lot. Um, because it's very, 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 very difficult to purchase land in Chicago. I don't want to say as an African American woman, but just in general. It is. Got it. <laughs> yeah, in general. It's expensive to say the least. Yeah. Um, and that also bothers me that you can walk down any street in an urban neighborhood and see vacant lots and abandoned yeah. buildings that are just sitting there. Mm-hmm. Why? You know, but that's a whole nother conversation. Um, I've like so with this program, they offer, they have like a big lot and you can purchase acres of lands for a little bit of money. And um, that's what I did, purchased a lot and then started to grow there. Um, so that's what I'm doing. That's where it started. That's incredible. All right, so now that we're there, you have your business partner. Two things. Before we move on, you have your business partner and what actually happens on a day to day so we can really get an understanding of what it takes. I know that there are some people who want to partner with you in turn or it partner with you literally, which we'll talk about momentarily. Okay. want to also consider starting a garden in their community. Are there some tips or tricks or shortcuts you can offer them to help them get started in their communities? Yes. um, So that's great that you said that. Um, I'm actually working on that now there was a woman that reached out to me they have um a not-for-profit and an institute and i stopped by to survey the site and she's mm-hmm. very interested in starting like a senior garden um okay so i love it right again we want these community gardens in our neighborhood to feed us yeah. I want yeah. to get to a place where we do not need to go to the grocery store and that we exchange food instead of mm-hmm. paying Yes. Um, so with yes. that, um, I would suggest, I don't want to say it has to be me, but someone who is able to just, and there are companies out here that like set up gardens. It's, it depends on who you get. Um, if they could tell you, you know, what type of containers that you need to grow what you're interested in, it could be a do it yourself type of project, which okay. I would recommend if you are able, because it's really just wood nails dirt to begin okay right? 
Okay. Um, but the part that you need to know is what you're growing, right? Because that would determine how much space you need to grow it. Okay. You know, some plants grow up and some plants grow out. Right. And you would have to know the difference. So I don't know what I, I'm just going to test the water. So are you planning on creating some sort of tutorials on YouTube or something to coach us through this or people who want, who are inspired by you right now, who want to start, but just need a little something. And I know they're gonna be able to reach out to you, but I mean, I see you, I mean, you're the young lady, you've had this as a dream and you're living it now. So no one, I mean, there may be people who can tell us how to do it, but with the passion and the true understanding that you offer, that's a completely different story. Are you willing to consider starting? Yes, something? actually, um, on my to-do list, um, I was going okay. to uh, do classes. However, <laughs> when I started, <laughs> my classes were going to be more along the lines of um, food diversity okay. uh, with different types of food, how to grow them, how they grow, how okay. they taste, how we can implement them in new dishes. Because okay. in our families, you know, Grandma always cooked the same meals, you know, right. and it just right. kept right. set in rotation. And that's how right. uh, we do in our homes today. Uh, some yeah. people are adventurous, you know, now that we have the internet, you can Google a recipe and yeah. try something new. Um, my thing, I am into biodiversity. So what that means is there are different varieties of everything. You go to the grocery store, and before you would only see orange carrots. So now you're starting yes. to see like the purple and the red, right. which is great. But think about that. If they, it's a thing with carrots now that you can see that, but there are so many other foods that are out here that we just don't know about. Um, okay. And also what I believe is that food is native to an area, right? Okay, so yes, I've, yeah, I've heard that. So the area for which you live, for instance, like, we see dandelions everywhere, right? It's we think it's a weed. There are other plants that are out here that are also considered weeds. Yep. But weeds grow in certain areas because they are made to uh, rectify the soil. Uh, so, mm -hmm. for instance, uh, dandelions have a taproot, which means it goes straight down to the ground. So, if okay. you see that area heavily populated with dandelions, that means that the ground needs some breaking up. So that's why the roots go dig deep to break up the ground to make it more fertile for whatever else is to come after that. So well, I've had dandelion greens. They are yummy. They are. And so again, weeds grow in areas for which people, so way back in the day with Native Americans, right? Yes. Yeah. They lived here and everything just grew and they would forage and they would eat everything that's there. And you will notice that plants look different with the seasons. So in yeah. the springtime, you'll see the dandelion leaves. That's when you eat dandelion leaves. Okay. When, it's, when the season is supposed to end, you pull up the dandelion and you chop the roots and you eat the roots. So it's all done purposely. Oh, yeah. that I did not know about. Yeah, so it's done purposely by nature. Yeah, yeah, right. And we just don't know that. So again, I say all that to say that there are a lot of different weeds that you see growing that are food for us and it, they have nutritional value and they are medicine given the time of the season. If you, yeah. some people believe if you eat, we eat food like on a rotation, like in the summertime, there's a lot of fruit uh, that produces and vegetables because we need that in the summertime because we're sweating a lot in the heat and we're losing a lot. Um, and then in the winter, things don't grow and that's where they dry beans and things of that nature. Right. And some people believe that that cycle is important, that you're not supposed to eat fruit in the winter. But that's oh. like, a, you know, you just got to get in where you fit in. You know, Understood. some people Understood. believe this, some people believe that. And I haven't put myself on that track, but it makes sense. I'm about the seasons and, yeah. you know, the way yeah. nature does things on its own. Mm -hmm. So that's what I'm getting into. So my classes were along yes. those lines about Good. nutrition food diversity. Let's try something new. Um, so does that mean you also cook or prepare? Like, cause I know a lot of people who just, if you just, if you can convince them that you're going to show them how to make a meal, they'll jump on. Okay. Yeah. Um, that was going to be, a, I wasn't going to cook per se, okay. because that's a whole okay. different setting. Um, yeah. you know, I'd have to get a kitchen, you know, okay. have our class in a kitchen 
and I've never cooked a teaching or a cooking class before. Um, we'll find somebody we, to partner with you on that. Yeah, side. you know, more like a grandma, like okay. put a little bit of this and a little bit of that, you know, not Me too. one cup of this. <laughs> yeah, I'm the same way. A pinch here, a pinch there. Ooh, yeah, I'm not there yet. Um, but I know that on my farm, you know, there's weeds and I'll pull them up, chop the roots off, take it home and eat it, you know. And I've yeah. started to introduce these things to some of the people that buy my produce. I'll throw okay. it in our bags that we offer and I'll tell them what it is. You know, this is purslane or this is lamb's quarter and I cook it this way. Tell me if you like it. And then okay. also, I'm not a chef. So I'll always say, if you could think of a way to make this better, let me know. You know, That's because good. everyone yeah, it has community in exchange. Yeah, because I mean, one dish I decided to throw mint in it, and it was way better. And then another one was like, yeah, I put um, watermelon in it, and I was like, what? I would have never thought that. Yeah. But somebody you know. said they'll partner with you, Jaren. I'll introduce you to her later. Okay. She does yeah. food prep, so we'll have to find a relationship. Yeah, that'd be awesome. Yeah, yeah. before. COVID-19 hit, my plan was to get my food into restaurants and bars, and then they all right. work. So but we now got, I'm working. There are options out there. Yes, Don't there worry. are. Good. For people that do what you do, like your heart and soul, I know some people that do what they do, their heart and soul. We'll make it, we'll, we'll make that collaboration. I'm excited about that. All right, so what are you doing at the farm? Tell us about, okay, so thank you for all the introduction and helping us get to know you. Tell us about the farm Okay. what happens. Our farm. Finding Justice, a flower and vegetable garden, is located on the south side of Chicago. Uh, it's in the old Robert Taylor home area. Um, oh, yeah. CHA, yeah, they tore those down, rebuilt um, new buildings, and they have a lot that has been purchased, um, not purchased, but leased. It's CHA land that has been leased by another company where I have leased a lot. So it's like a lot of leasing goes on. That's what happens with urban farmers. We lease land. Um, yep. And I got, another, I got another chef, Alejandro, Chef Alejandro. He's also a vegan chef. So, yes, a whole other connection. We're on the same show called Real Talk, Real Women Live, which airs this Sunday, in case y'all didn't know. Quick plug. But another connect for you. Another okay. connect. Wonderful. Um, so the land, we grow food there. Um, so we grow things that we know that people like to eat, you know, tomatoes, mm -hmm. numbers. Uh, but again, I'm about biodiversity, so I buy different varieties of things just to okay. learn how to grow them because not all things grow equally. Um, it right. takes a long time to grow things, so I have a greenhouse where I start seeds. Um, nice. And seeds, and as a matter of fact, I'd like to show you. So, like, for instance, this one. I wanted to try rosemary. Nothing I that I can ever... word up top. I'm glad you said rosemint. Made it real simple for me. <laughs> yeah, of course we have scientific names, right? But yeah. rosemint is the easy way to remember it. So oh I'll purchase seeds. You know, I've never heard of rosemint. Does it taste like roses? Does it taste like mint? I don't know, right? Let's try it. Then the question is, how does it grow? I don't know. So you open it up, right? And I just want to show you these seeds. Like, <laughs> almost yeah, impossible. It's great. It's great. Uh, a little almost. higher, a little higher. Oh my gosh, they're tiny. Do you see how little these seeds are? Yeah. That, that's four seeds. That's four plants. That's four a plants. whole plant? This will become a whole plant, yes. So depending on what it is, sometimes seeds are small, sometimes they're big. Uh, like if you could imagine like a pumpkin seed. That pumpkin seed is big, right? And yeah. that will grow a pumpkin. And they're phenomenal. By the yes, way. but these little seeds are supposed to grow rosemary. So I tried it. <clears throat> um, right. And then also things take a long time to grow sometimes, right? So whenever you buy a seed pack, I don't know if you can read this, yeah. but it has instructions about how to do it. Yeah, um, Pl planning instructions. And it'll yeah. tell you how long it takes uh, on this side. Now that I can't see. You okay, I'll read it to you. So like that. on the side, it'll tell you the ideal temp, uh, plant spacing, how many hours of sun, and it sprouts in 14 to 21 days. So mint does not take long. That's quick. Yeah, sprouting doesn't mean ready to eat though. So that oh, means okay. it's okay. uh, I see. I'm <laughs> yeah. break it down for me. I'm yeah. I'm, like, I'm, I'm munching already. Right. Yeah. No. So it'll take 14 to 21 days to like come out of the dirt. Like, oh, is this, is okay. this the world? Is this the world? Okay. And then okay. it'll take more time until it's ready to harvest. So okay. you can imagine like a pepper, bell pepper. Mm -hmm. That takes about like uh, 75 days. Like peppers take a long time to grow. So we started in the greenhouse in the winter time. 
Uh, so that's just mixing up soil, healthy yes. soil, yes. putting it in a pot, putting yeah. the seed in, sprinkling yeah. some dirt, watering it every day. Some plants you need to make sure the temperature is right because like tomatoes don't like the cold. They like it warm. No. So put a heating pad underneath it and grow. They'll grow Wait, that way. Do you grow mangoes in Chicago? No mangoes. I said tomatoes. I don't know. Oh, I, my mind said mango. Okay. I was like, wait, did you grow? Did you find a way to grow? Oh, that's... No, but I am okay. figuring out a way to do lemons here because that bag of lemons okay. really bothered me at the store. So I'm working on it. You know, okay. Okay. there's a lemon that grows in a pot. I'm going to try it this year and see what happens. Wow. Yeah. Apparently it's the same type of thing, but the only thing is that it needs a lot of care uh, to, to have yeah. it to continue to grow. And it takes about a year to three years to bear fruit anyway. So I'm gonna work you on are so, a patient woman. Yeah, so that's a thing with farming. It's working on my patience. I wasn't always a, a patient person, but I'm getting there. Uh, well, you're trees. helping me though too. You're helping me because the parallel of life, right? Is, is still farming. The things I've been working on, they're still taking their time. Some things are just sprouting. So anyway. Yeah. You're, you, you're like helping me out. I'm over here like, oh, okay, that's like this and that. Go ahead. Yeah, so I mean, there's so many lessons that you can learn with farming as well. Um, literally. Literally. Um, it takes a long time to grow food. Um, you asked about a day-to-day -day on a farm. So if you can imagine in the winter, we usually start like around February-ish, right? Planting okay. things in the greenhouse uh, because again, as we looked on this mint package, it'll take 14 days, which is two weeks for it to sprout out of the ground. All seeds won't even make it. Okay. So okay. know that as well. And it, if you're buying seeds, I will recommend buying it from a seed company, not a grocery store or a department store, if you can. Uh, because I've, I've bought seeds from those places and you'll get maybe 20 seeds and maybe five of the plants will actually grow. And if you care for them the exact same way. So okay, not so all. Where, where is the seed company? Because you just blew me away. I'm like, hold on, I can't, I can't trust Walmart seeds. No, you I can. Just seeds. know that every seed that you plant will not become a plant, and that's okay. across the board. You know, okay. um, like seed stores. Um, and I can send you some links for you to post if people are interested. Yeah, in there will be absolutely. Okay. Yeah. So every seed that you plant won't always grow. So you plant a lot of them. Okay. okay. And that happens usually in February. And then they grow, mm -hmm. hopefully, right? You water yeah, them. Yeah, yeah hopefully. You water them, you feed them. Oh, some plants need food. Uh, there's actually like a chemical level of the soil. Soil is important as well. Yeah, when, you, yeah. and it's, when you're getting into like mass production, right? And then if you have hundreds of plants anywhere, you'll start to get pests, right? And yeah. so you need to manage that with not with chemicals, but with natural remedies. Um, so these things happen in the winter, right? Hardly yeah. any pests. It's more or less like slow growing, hoping mm. things live that mm. way. So then mm. springtime comes. So that's now we're in like March. But okay. we live in Chicago where things are, weather is super unpredictable. Yeah. So you just never know when that last frost is going to happen. Okay. So you monitor the weather. Weather is very important to us farmers. Um, and if the last frost has happened, and they'll let you know, you know, they'll say, hey, yeah. last frost is going to be maybe around this time. You're like, yes, it's about that time. Okay. So now your plants are like, you know, like this big or so. And now they're ready. You have to like harden them off. So you take them out of the greenhouse a couple hours a day. So they get used to not being all cozy and warm in a greenhouse, okay. or like okay. outside in the cold a little bit. Yeah. And then they'll be like, I think I can do this. So now you're like, you're ready, plant. You're going to be the biggest collard green yeah. plant or the biggest bell pepper plant yeah. ever, right? Yeah, yeah. So then you take them to the farm, you plant them. They don't like to move. No one likes to move, right? You got to pack up all your stuff, you know? Yeah. It's yeah. difficult. Yeah. So you take them yeah. from the greenhouse, you plant them in the ground, and now it's like they start stretching their roots. They're like, do I like this? I don't know if I like yeah. this. Yeah. Some of them like it, some of them don't, you know, yeah. you water yeah. them, you, you talk to them, you tell them everything's going to be okay. Mm -hmm. um, and then they grow. Yeah. And then you had to add, uh, you know, nutrients and compost and sometimes amendments to the soil to give them what they need to grow big. 
And then again, it's a waiting process. Like it takes months for them to get bigger and bigger. You have to prune them so that they're healthy. Um, again, this takes months and months yeah. of yeah. dedication to water it. Then you have to battle weeding, right? Because other things want to grow there too, you know, because the ground, the, the soil is fertile. They want to live, but we right. don't want you there. So you pull them up, you know, you're in the sun, you buy a nice sun hat, yeah. uh, keep the sun off your face, um, you water it, and yeah. then spring comes around. Now the bugs are out, right? Now they want to eat too. They have yeah. to eat. Yeah. So yeah. they're eating, and if they're out of control, you know, then you have to manage that. But yeah. And also grocery stores and, like, restaurants are very particular about the way that their produce looks, you know? That's correct can't have a bunch of little flea beetle holes or caterpillar pillar holes in your, your leaves of anything, you know? Which is interesting um, because those are actually good indicators of good soil that, a, that an insect would want to be near it. Isn't that true or is that not necessarily true? Well, yes. I mean, before I was a farmer, if food had holes in it, to me, it was like, well, if an insect wants to eat this plant, it must be real food. Because how many times have you left like a McDonald's burger on the ground and nothing will go over there to eat nothing. it? Nothing. walk right past it. Right. It's yeah. not nutritious. Yeah. It does nothing yeah. for you. It's just a yeah. filler. So, yeah. yeah, it doesn't bother me. Um, but the plants with the holes in it, like I can often sell them to someone that is juicing. Um, <clears throat> so... People like me, yes. I love that stuff because I know it's yes. still super healthy. Definitely, you know, you just wash it, throw it in a juicer. Hey, who cares if it has holes in it? The holes, yeah. Anyway, yes. Yeah, so we manage pests, and then uh, we get time to harvest. Harvest days are very long days. Um, we go, we harvest produce, we wash it down, um, we pack it, and then we send it off. It goes to your house. We harvest it in the same day, we wash it, and then we allow pickups or drop-offs. And so how does that community relationship work, right? So some people may be interested in supporting you through purchasing. What's the relate? So we thank you, first of all, for explaining the tediousness that you go through. You actually ministered to my soul the whole way through because I kept thinking about my dreams, goals, and challenges. And I hope other people were too because you were really speaking about how it works, even keeping the sun out of your face. I let too much light get in the way. But... You were talking about, um, uh, we were leaning more toward the community. And, and, and so now that you've done the arduous work of being a farmer or the beautiful work of being a farmer, right? How do you then, what's the, how does that relationship with the community work, right? Oh man, that's great. You have a farm. Can I buy something? Or how does that work? What's that relationship? Yeah. Okay. So number one, we need more farmers. Uh, so if anyone is interested in volunteering or working on a farm, which, you know, there are, there, I mean, let's talk about it. There's a stigma, right, with African-Americans and slavery, right? Okay. So that's often what I hear. I, I don't want to be on the Yeah, I don't want to be on the field. All of this. And it's like, stop. I understand the history, the painful history. And it's true. However, we were brought here for that purpose. Mm -hmm. It's it something that needs to be done. Somebody has to do it, right? Yeah. yeah. So it's usually easier for me to find, like, now that the COVID is here with these children in the house with nothing to do, right? So it's like, hey, let's go to the farm. Let's go outside. You know, try to make it exciting. Like, our farm is fun, you know? It's okay, not so like... you parents who don't know what to do with your nappy head kids, she just gave y'all a clue. I'm just saying. All right, go ahead. Uh, they will have to be over 16 years old. Okay. Oh, that's farm. even better because those are the ones that want to just sit and play video games. Absolutely. And, you know, get they'll get out there. Yeah, they'll get out there and they'll help, you know, and I try not to make it really hard, you know, yeah. because, again, there's hard jobs and there's easier jobs. Yeah. And there are jobs per where we are in the season. Um, mm -hmm. So, like, for anyone that is, like, a beginner or I'll take you at any stage, you know, if you're willing to sweat and get dirty, that's great. But there's something for everyone, you know, so... Don't think that you have to be out there like digging and like, you know, tilling the land. You know, that's the hard part. It's necessary. But if that's not your thing, you could see, you know, you can do some transplanting. You could do some watering. You could do harvesting. Like every farmer has a thing that they like. You know, I personally like to do weeding, you know, but I have others who like to do pruning or others that like to do the watering. It's just, you know, you get into your groove. 
Yep. And we all work together to get the job done, you know. So it's not that you have to come work on a farm to do everything. Just do a part of something. And then as these parts come together, now we have a complete whole farm produce right. that is available to everyone. So we need new farmers. That's one. So if anybody is interested in anything, call me, text me, email me. Let's talk about it. I was just talking to a woman um she said that she had an environmental studies degree and her job was at a she had a project where she mapped like food deserts in the state for which she lived in. Mm -hmm. And she was like, I loved that part of the job. So I said, OK, let's try to figure out how to put you in this system, this industry in a role that would make you happy that you would want yes. to stay, yes. you know, yes. Yes. so yes. I'm all about like bringing people closer to the land, but you have to love it because you'll leave. It's that easy. If it's hard, you're going to leave. If you don't want to do it, you're going to leave. But there is a job for you in this industry. I just want to say that out loud. Um, so we need farmers. Uh, as far as buying produce, um, mm -hmm. that's easy. Um, I'm available. Uh, so we sell like produce bags. Um, so you can mm -hmm. buy a bag of whatever is harvested in the day. We put it together, sell your bag. Uh, either we can bring it to you or you can come to pick it up. Uh, the bags are $25 without delivery, 30 with the delivery. Um, and again, it's out of the ground into your house. That's it. Like, so you know where it came from. Yes. Mm -hmm. I'm sorry, because I'm a consumer. Now, I understand what you do. I used to do it when I lived up north. I, would, I was a part of a co-op. I loved it. Oh, my God, I loved it. All right, so, but the consumer question is, Am I going to have more or less than what I get at the store? Prepare me so I can just work through it. Okay. For so the same I mean, $25. I understand. So okay. talk about this. I went to the grocery store yesterday. Okay. I spent $60. Let me tell you what I got for $60. <laughs> okay. I think I got a, a bag of cilantro. It wasn't even a pound. It was like a little bag of cilantro. I got a, a bag of tomatoes, a bag of lemons. Um, other things that aren't produce related, but it wasn't a lot. Sure. Like I felt yeah, like yeah. food is expensive in the store. And the, again, the quality of the food is not great. Like, you know yeah. how you go and you look at broccoli in the store, you flip the bottom over is brown or like the, the coloring of the tops yeah. are like purple and green. It takes a long time for those things to happen. So in my farmer brain is how long, where was this sitting and how long was it sitting there before it got here? And this yeah. is my only option yeah. at this point, you know? Right, right, right. It's bad. So, yeah, that is the reason why okay. I prefer, I love the summertime because now my produce is ready. I don't have to be bothered with the grocery store. Right. That's it. So right. as for a consumer, what people need to also know is that things are harvested. Like someone has to go out there, 90 degree weather today, right? Mm -hmm. harvesting that means cutting things off of vines you know pulling them out of the ground washing them and preparing them for for you mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. that takes time right mm -hmm. um so taking it out of the ground to harvest it to wash it to put it in a bag for you how much and how little you will get depends on how much is harvested um Absolutely. some things that are harvested aren't you know aren't ready so you know that's how, like, if you go to the grocery store, there's seasonal foods, right? Right. You know, you can only get watermelons in the summer. You can rarely get them right. in the, there's an abundance of watermelons in the summer and not mm -hmm. so many in the winter because they're coming from somewhere else. It is the same way on any farm anywhere in the world. So right. if the season is for tomatoes, we're harvesting tomatoes and you'll right. get as many as, you know, can fit in the bag. So it's like, we'll put a bundle of this, a bundle of that, a bundle of that. And as we get to know you as farmers, you'll tell me, well, Sean, I, I don't like those uh, purple turnips. I like the Hakurai turnips better, you know? So then we'll, we won't give you those. We'll give you something else, you know, cool. um, if cool. it's harvested at that time. So Understood. for the consumer that is purchasing something, it's like, you're going to get a bunch of stuff, yeah. some stuff that you don't even know what it is. Uh, you'll yeah. get some instructions on how to prepare it if you like it. And then but, you'll offer me feedback. Yeah, you'll offer me feedback. Like, uh, I didn't like that personally, LaShawn. I don't want to do that again. Okay, that's fine. Next time I'll throw like mint chamomile. You know, it's just yeah. depends on what is harvested. So it's kind of like a mystery box. I mean, you'll get what you know and what you love. 
and you'll also get like some bonus items and how to cook it. Oh, see. So it's the highest available nutrition for you. So your body's going to love you for it, whether your palate, how fast your palate adjusts depends on preparation, but it actually is way more nutritious to get it when it's first harvested than anything you can buy in the store at all. And I'm not I saying don't buy in the store because if you have a bad habit of fast food, please buy in the store until you can get to a farm. But the Absolutely. farm quality is so high, it's worth it. Yes, yes. And like uh, I said, the texture of the food will be different than what you're used to. Yeah. Uh, because again, it's fresh Understood. out of the ground. I actually just gave um, or this woman a bag of produce and she was like, you know, we cooked the greens and they were so fresh. We like the crunch, like when you break them apart, she was like, I wasn't used to this at all. And I'm like, no, right. I'm trying to tell you, I want you to understand. Yeah. You yeah. don't understand. So yeah. it's amazing. You should try it. I would just say, just try it. Buy yeah. food from a farmer and it'll change your world. It's, it's All right. So as we're starting to wrap up, I have two questions for you. The first question, I'm gonna give them both to you. You can ask them any order you want. The first question is, how many people do you serve now? The second question is, how can we serve you? Okay. Um, successful. I like those questions. Um, when you say, how many people do I serve? Yes, how many people do you kind of come through the farm in terms of purchasing to support the farm or buy from? Yeah, okay, so we offer CSAs as well. Um, so what that stands for is Community Supported Agriculture. It is a model where um, in the beginning of the season, it's like a subscription-based sort yeah. of thing. Yeah. So you pay uh, a fee in the beginning of the season and then we deliver boxes produce to you every week or bi-weekly, depending on your choice. Uh, okay. So that is the preferred method of okay. doing business because how that helps a farmer is that you give them their capital up front. Now we can use that money to pay for seeds, pay for uh, okay. amendments, water, things of that nature. And then you know that you're getting what's harvested every week. Okay, preferred method. Um, so I have Currently, I only have five of those right now. Okay. okay. We're new though. So first year on this farm. How old are you? First year. Okay, on this farm. Okay, cool. Got it. One year. Yeah. So um, so we have five of those currently. Okay. Um, now people purchasing uh just a bag, you know, hey, I need some fresh produce. Um, we have that's sporadic. Um, there's no way to count it. It's just if they've heard from our farm or have seen me anywhere, it's Hey, you have a farm. Can I purchase a bag of produce? Yes. Get your information. Um, an ISA payments through Zelle and Cash App. Most people like to do it that way. Um, okay. And then here's your produce, or I can meet you somewhere, or you can come to the farm, or that's the exchange. Um, okay. That's so sporadic. It's hard to say. You know, some of them are, most of them are repeat customers, but, you know, it's not every week. You know, it could be two okay. times a week. It just depends on the family that is purchasing. Um, I also offer time on the farm, people that are interested. So I serve them as here, come to the farm. Do you want to help do this? We have, uh, several volunteers, some that are consistent and some that are not, uh, and they love it. You know, they learn how things grow and, you know, it's amazing. People just don't know what a tomato plant looks like. Um, they don't know what these plants look like. And even like there's some joy in like if you can walk the space and you're like, oh, those are carrots. Like just by looking at the green leaves that are in the ground, you know, everything looks different. And so if you're ever anywhere else stranded on a farm, it's like, hmm, that looks like a carrot. I'm gonna pull it up and now you know what you can eat, you know. Okay. So, you know, teaching people about uh, different things on the farm, they love that as well. Mm -hmm. um, I have, again, working with some non for profits about setting up spaces to help the community, you know, with giving them a place to go and things to do, which is important, uh, giving them a skill set. That was one thing that was important to the, the woman that I'm working with currently, that she wants to provide a skill set. And this is a skill set that will that they can take with them mm -hmm. later in life. Um, so that's the answer to that first question. Okay. And then the second question is how you can serve me again. I we need farmers. So anyone that is interested in any part of farming and you, you might not even know what parts there are to farming. You know, there's 
anything that you have a skill set currently in can be moved over to farm. Okay. okay. Put it like that. So if you're okay. interested in anything that I've said, we can talk about how you can contribute to this industry because it is a dying field and it can't die or we will. Yeah. Um, yeah. Also, yeah, so volunteers, we need volunteers, um, maybe whole farmers later down the line. Um, we do need capital um, because of the COVID-19. Um, I work a job outside of farming because I don't have extra money to pay for things, right? So Still. I work nine to five. I, after that, I go to the farm. Yeah, so it's like I'm doing a lot, a whole lot. So oh, <laughs> it's describe. difficult. That's amazing. Yeah, so it's difficult. That's how you know it's real, you know? Yeah. <laughs> you go to it's one job. Fantastic. Yeah, so um, during the COVID-19, my car was stolen, so I'm on the train oh, wow. to the farm, you know? So it's very difficult, but it's it's working. Um, so okay. Okay. any help that people would like to come to the yeah. farm, to, like, help me do that. Um, if anyone wants to make any donations, you know, we need yeah. seeds and tools. If anyone has any hold tools on, or... Hold on, hold on. Some of you should make a donation because you're contributing to a community garden where there's a food desert. And now would be a great time to step up and partner to ensure that people who need more nutrition has access to it. And you're supporting someone who has a passion who does the work. OK, back to our regularly scheduled programming. OK, go ahead. What you say? OK, yeah. So, like, you know, we need tools. We need, yeah. you know, we need to purchase seeds. It's just a lot that goes into this farming. You know, time is something that we have and the skill set to actually do the work, but to like pay for other things like, you know, our website and is kind of half up and half down. Again, I said that I have a full time job, so it's difficult for me to build a website, do social media, reply to emails. I do my best um, for all of those who have sent emails in the past two weeks. I've had two deaths in the family, so I have not been as responsive as usual but I'm going to get back to that now that things are coming back to normal. Um, you got two questions. Yeah, so, okay. As we're wrapping on time, these questions are good questions for you. The first question was, how can people donate? And the second question was, this is exciting. Where is she located? So we will wrap up with those two. We got like five minutes. Okay. Um, so I'm available on Facebook, uh, Finding Justice, a flower and vegetable garden. Also on Instagram, Finding dot justice our email address which is the best way to contact me is finding justice garden at gmail.com um you can send an email there that's the best way i am very responsive um you'll get a reply back within 24 hours um yeah and those that's the best way to contact me and we can talk about everything how to get you produce if you're interested how to volunteer if you're interested how to donate if you're interested um Excellent. If you're interested, send me an email, finding justice uh, garden at email. Already, so we're going to put all that in the notes for you. Okay. Yeah. Is there any last one burning 60 second thing you need to tell us? You shared a lot already. Go outside, spend time outside. It's for your health. If you can, buy fresh produce. Farmer preferred, grocery store accepted. Just get those vitamins inside of you and notice how your mood changes and how you feel changes. Like mm -hmm. everything changes when you start to eat more produce. Stay away from these fast food restaurants. It's poison. <laughs> okay. I'm trying to tell people they don't want this. Yeah, yeah stay away from the box day. foods. Stay away from the canned yeah. foods. Mm -hmm. Buy fresh food. Eat fresh food. And you'll get used to the taste of it. You know, experiment with different flavors and mm -hmm. see what you like. Again, yeah. Google is right at your fingertips every day on your cell phone. Yeah. Google a recipe and try it. You might like it. I'm just saying. Thank you, my friend. Thank you. Can you hold the room for one moment? Yes. All right, just I'll be right back with you. You've heard it today on Wellness Wednesdays. Not only did she leave us with rich understanding of what's involved in farming, but she also offered us an opportunity to come and be a part of it. She offered some of you an opportunity to bring your families and expand your awareness over the summertime. Since Chicago summer isn't what it used to be, at least this summer, you can go actually contribute to someone else's community and perhaps buy some produce for yourself. And for others, maybe you want to donate and support. 
All I know is that LaShawn Miller was fantastic. What I personally took from her was, of course, all that knowledge that she shared, but so many parallels to life and the work that's involved. She really did a great job of explaining how dreams come from seeds and how they connect. And sometimes they work and sometimes they don't, but you still got to nurture it along the way. And then you got to test it out and keep it back, which hold on to it and protect it from the sun, but still be persistent. So I was completely fed. This is Marquise Martin Hayes. Thank you for joining me for another Wellness Wednesday. Hope you have a fantastic week. Ciao.